दुकान के सामने 2019-20 और 2020-21 का बजट पेश कर रहा हूँ आज ये बजट पेश करते हुए स्पीकर साहब हमें अपने वो साथी हमारे वो कॉलीग जो पिछले फाइनेंशियल ईयर में 2019-20 में हमें से जुदा हो गए उनका याद करना भी जरूरी है मैं पीर सैयद गुलाम शाह जिलानी अदी शहनाज अंसारी साई अली मरदान शाह और हमारे प्यारे भाई हाजी मुर्तजा बलोच जो कोरोना से की वजह से वफात पा गए उनको इस मौके पर याद करता हूँ स्पीकर साहब असा तमाम दुखे वक्त में आई हूँ दुखे वक्त में असा हिन साल की जी बजट पेश क्यों पाया उनमें काफ़ी इश्यूज हैं उनके बुधाने लाए असेंबली मेंबरान के असेंबली के थ्रू स्पीकर साहब तेजे थ्रू इन सूबे के मान के आगाह कर तो चाहिए सर वी हैव गॉन थ्रू अ लॉन्ग एंड टायरिंग जर्नी फेसिंग एंड कॉम्बैटिंग द चैलेंजिंग चैलेंजेस पोज बाय कोविड द एपिडेमिक दैट स्प्रेड अक्रॉस इंटरनेशनल बाउंड्रीज एंड इवेंचुअली एस्केलेटेड इनटू अ ग्लोबल पेंडेमिक स्प्रेडिंग ओवर 200 कंट्रीज इट इज आल्सो अफेक्टेड पाकिस्तान वी नाउ सी इट एक्सटेंडेड टू आवर इंपैक्ट इन अ सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक डोमेन्स In the wake of the disastrous effects of COVID-19, Sin government initiatives and resources had to be redirected to save precious lives in a potentially decelerating economy. COVID-19 was primarily a threat to existing health systems and subsequently exist- extended its impact to all facets of life. as it grew in size to reach a massive scale the world had to divert its resources to save people from this invisible enemy it brought life to a grinding halt and converted cities into virtual ghost towns it was aimed so the entire world went towards a lockdown the major countries and i'll talk about some of them This was aimed at minimizing people-to-people contact, breaking the human chain of dominoes, and thus we coined a new word: social distancing. So, government of sin followed the universally adopted approach to address. as soon as it first case of surface on 26th of february 2020 and schools were immediately closed to protect our children <coughs> we moved towards closing down all places where people could gather and a lockdown was imposed on 23rd of march 2020 <coughs> this continues to be enforced in one way or the other throughout the country so as soon as we imposed the lockdown other provinces followed suit <coughs> and the entire country imposed a lockdown sir i would like to mention that in the entire world two different approaches were used one what what i call the capitalist approach which talked about court daily wages but in their mind they had the interest of the capitalist Second was the humanist approach, which made COVID-19 a priority, and we are glad that in this province of sin, we initiated this. So the countries which use capitalist approach, United States, the United Kingdom, Brazil, Italy, <coughs> Spain, and to some extent Pakistan. have suffered due to covid so where is the countries which looked at the humanist approach which cared for the lives of the people
people. They have successfully, at least initially, combated the virus. I'm talking about China, Greece, Australia, Taiwan, and New Zealand. So New Zealand has successfully potential meltdown as economy came to a near standstill as a result of an imminent national lockdown. No! Sir, I would like to highlight some of the major steps taken by government of sin. We created a coronavirus emergency fund with an initial outlay of rupees 3 billion. <laughs> Initially, rupees 1.3 billion was contributed from the government of sin and around rupees monitored and approved by a committee headed by the Chief Secretary Sin. The committee has strong representation from the private sector for ensuring transparency as well as neutrality in the processes. We hired one of the top four audit firms which has already submitted its first report. So we didn't forget our health professionals. A high-risk allowance comprising of one really basic salary in relevant pay scale has been allowed initially to the health personnel who are performing duties related to COVID-19 patients in the health institutions of laboratories. This risk allowance is being extended to all health facilities post graduate house job officers will also be paid initial basic pay of PPS 18 and 17 respectively with effect of March 2020 till subsiding of COVID-19 pandemic. So it is estimated that rupees 1 billion will be spent on the health risk allowance in the next financial year 2020-21. So we did not stand idle. When, uh, slide one, Jara Janadev, when we first started, you will see it in a little while on the screens, we had a capacity of only 80 tests per day. That has been successfully increased. And if you see on the 26th of February, still at a capacity of 80 tests per day, which has increased to 11,450 tests per day. Uh, <laughs> on the 16th of June, we carried out 11,819 tests, which is the highest in any province in the country. Sir, to cope with the extraordinary situation arising out of COVID-19, health sector being the frontline service provider, expeditiously initiated steps to make necessary arrangements to avoid a big human disaster. 81 isolation centers in all districts with 8,266 bed capacity were established. By June 2020, 
This capacity will increase to 8,660 for ensuring timely supplies and proper service delivery. Government of Sindh constituted medical procurement committees. The committee procured personal protection equipment, laboratory items and equipment and other essential machinery equipment and instruments worth 2.43 billion which include expenditure of rupees 1.5 billion under the Karoja emergency fund and 891.8 million from PDMA funds. In addition, the existing ventilators, 101 more ventilators were procured on need basis for public health sector facilities with 250 monitors to ensure timely availability of life-saving services to critical patients. Sir, I would like to tell you how we've improved the health facilities since the coronavirus, uh, uh, the first case of coronavirus occurred. Sir, if you look at the screen above, when this virus hit us, we had only 91 ICU beds reserved.
136 people died today on Corona. That is a fact. That is what the NCOC says, what the federal government says. So we've taken a number of steps in terms of... Uh, including doctors, nurses, paramedics and technicians who provided care to COVID-19 patients by placing their lives at stake. They were our first line of defense. Our healthcare professionals proved that they are defenders of health of the nation. We must also acknowledge the services provided by our law enforcement agencies, the police, the rangers and the armed forces put their health and their life at risk to enforce government policies. Acknowledgement is also due to our revenue officials and other government officers and officials. The press and media should also be mentioned for keeping the people informed in these difficult times. I would also like to acknowledge the assistance provided by the World Health Organization, UNICEF, the Aga Khan University, the Sindh Institute of Urology and Transplant and the Inters Hospital. Sir, I would especially like to thank Dr. Adi Ramad Rizvi. I went and visited him yesterday for the work that he's putting in. Dr. Abdul Bari Khan of Inters Hospital and Dr. Faisal Mahmood of EKU for their guidance. Sir, I would request at least my side, they're already on their feet. I'll request my side of the house. We are grateful, Mr. Speaker, because we realize and appreciate that COVID is not a challenge anyone can tackle alone. While individual, individual isolation is treatment of COVID, administrative isolation is not. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, it seems like the federal government has not grasped the concept of efficacy of teamwork. At a time when our frontline workers and our hospitals needed the most support, they have instead made a bid to take over the running of three of our major hospitals. I condemn at this point in time the federal government trying to take over hospitals which the provincial government has upgraded to such an extent that the entire world acknowledges the work done on these hospitals and I assure you sir we will do our best to serve the people of this province and to make sure that these hospitals under the government of sin continue to provide the service that we have been doing. So the hospitals they are trying to illegally take control of have been hailed as a success story. The federal government should know that we uh, will not sit idly as they attempt to bring our hospitals down to the level of the ones that they operate. We had hoped that personal petty agendas would have been ignored at the time of COVID, but sir, we have been disappointed. Sir, before I move on, I'd like to touch upon the other major issue, the other major uh, problem that is uh, now confronting our country, and this is the locust. Sir, agriculture, we are an agrarian economy. Agriculture plays a pivotal role in the country's economy. It contributes 24% to GDP. Since contribution to national production is 36%, in rice, 29% in sugarcane, 34% in cotton, and 15% in wheat. We are determined to increase agriculture output to make farmers and the provinces prosperous. Unfortunately, we are facing the imminent threat of food insecurity as a direct result of locusts which not only threaten our crops, but also put our economy at stake. 
our former friendly government abstained this making untiring efforts to address this. So the locust had attacked initially last year and in the month of May and June when they came to the Nara Canal, Nara desert area, I had gone there personally to oversee the problem. The control of locust is a federal subject. The Plant Protection Department of the federal government summary at 8 a.m. to the Prime Minister's office. When Agriculture Minister went there, Shahid Motama Benazir Bhutto approved the summary and within a week, eight aircraft were entered and they were deployed in Pakistan and they took care of locals. Unfortunately, this federal government has not taken those serious steps and a lot needs to be done as far as the locust is concerned. Sir, I will just tell you what the government of China is doing, and if I can see this slide. Sir, we have, we have made Talka level teams at this point in time. We've got 98 teams working in SIM. Unfortunately, the federal government has only deployed six teams in the desert area. The aircraft is not working. On the 6th of March, we were promised that an aircraft will be given. The six aircraft we had wanted, demanded, and we were told we would be given, but we are sitting here on the 17th of June, and not a single aircraft has been provided for the locust control in the deserts of Sindh. So, we successfully countered locust last year, even this year, till now, we've been successful. Yes, there have been damages, but our teams are active. If you see the next slide, uh, you can see that a total of 978 complaints were received, 950 complaints have been addressed, and there are 28 complaints in process. And you can see that in each district of the province, the agriculture department is active. We are being helped by the Park Army, we are being helped by NDMA in this case, but a lot more needs to be done by the federal government. So before I go to the budget details, before I go to the budget details, I would like to touch upon another thing that this time has created a crisis by the federal government, something that the federal government has created another crisis. Sir, our government has been serving the people of Sindh for the past 12 years. People of the province repose their confidence in us because we believe in democracy, justice and fair play. We have been making sacrifices and investing all our energies in prompting welfare of the people. The founder of Pakistan People's Party, Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and Shaheed Motarma Benazir Bhutto sacrificed their life for the sake of democracy and for the rights of the people of this country. Our present leadership is also following the step and adhering to the potential vision of the great leader. While our country is facing grave challenge of COVID-19 and the locust attack, some attempts are being made to raise an issue for revisiting the contents of the 18th Constitutional Amendment passed in 2010. Not only the 18th Amendment is being discussed, shared distribution formula of NFC award is also being questioned. I would reiterate our commitment to stand for the autonomy given to provinces by the 18th Amendment. Since the creation of our beloved country on 14th August 1947, 18th Amendment was an important step in devolving powers from the federal government to the provincial government. Credits of this amendment goes to the leadership of our country. President Asif Ali Zatali led the front and bequeathed the gift of the 18th Amendment to this country. I will miss no words in saying that it is only due to devolved powers under the 18th Amendment that spin is spearheaded the country in making preventative safety measures in wake of COVID-19. The amendment equipped the provinces to design workable strategies 
and take practical measures to address the global emergency. In the absence of the default powers, the province would have looked to the federal government for instructions, guidance, resources, and possibility of a prompt action would have been little to none. This would have resulted in, in colossal damage. But with the 18th Amendment to support us, our situation remained under control. The federal government later on joined hands with the provinces in a rear guard action, and we now hope to see the silver lining of the dark COVID, cloud, dark, uh, COVID dark cloud soon. But this will only happen if the federal government follows the policy which was adopted by the countries which took care of the lives of the people and did not go after the capitalist approach. Does a talk of reversal of 18th Amendment or a change in the amendment in any form may reduce the powers of the province, which may consequently weaken the federation itself. Eventually, trust deficit may develop between the federation and the federating units. If, God forbid, this happens, it will increase the suffering of the people and the provincial governments may not be in a position to respond in timely manner to mitigate distress or disappointment. So the leadership of a party considers the 18th Amendment as the only panacea for the develop, development in the country. PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said in his address to at the at Lahore University of Management Sciences earlier this year, and I quote him, in 2010 we achieved consensus and all democratic parties played a role in the passage of the 18th Amendment. It is the only way forward to ensure rights of the smaller provinces. And we will follow the guidance and the directions of our Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. Sir, I will now present the revised estimates for 2019-20 and the budget estimates for 2020-21. The provincial budget option, like other provinces, depends mainly upon federal transfers and it constitutes 70% of the provincial budget. The government of Sin set its development and non-development programs and targets based on the commitment made by the federal government. Any shortfall in this regard seriously impacts the performance of the provincial government. I would like you to put on the slide now. Sir, if you look at this, the federal government had wanted to collect 5.5 trillion uh, in 2019-20. The FBR estimates have been revised back to 3.9 trillion. What this has done is that instead of 761 billion, the share that we have promised now is 535 billion. More than 230 billion, almost 230 billion have been reduced from the sin share because of the inefficiency of FBR. And they would want to blame this on Corona. Sir, this is Corona. If you take it from July and March, then from July and July, it will be a dismal performance. And if there is no performance, then it will be 300 or 400 billion. So it will not go up from 4.2, 4.3 billion. And now we have all the failures of Corona. We are putting on the failures of Corona. की नाकामियां की वजह से सुबह ने सफर किया है और उनकी नामुक्तियों की वजह से सुबह नहीं कर सक रहे हैं। सर अगर आप देख लें अगले साल के लिए, the federal government has estimated 4.9 billion trillion rupees for collection. Sir, I don't think this is a target that this they can achieve. In fact, the federal finance advisor in this post budget press conference. Had already, has already casted some doubt in them. Based on this, we have been promised 680 billion rupees next year. Shall I tell you why I think that these numbers are not achievable? So if you look at this slide, you will get an idea. So in 2017-18, the GDP growth was at 5.8 percent. The revised and the actual was 5.2 percent. So last year, the first year of the PTI government, the GDP growth was estimated at 6.2%. Exactly a year ago, the federal government presented the economic survey for 2018-19, and they said the growth would be 3.3%. Instead, the growth was only 1.9%.
This was the dismal performance of the first year of the PTI government when there was no corona threat, there was no emergency in the country, there were no floods which the People's Party government had, uh, you know, had countered. And despite a very good normal year, they failed miserably to achieve the growth target. In the current year, they had set the growth targets at 4 percent. They, about two weeks ago, presented in the NEC the growth of minus 0.4 percent. But I have said in the meeting that World Bank minus 2.6 percent is growing in this country. Why are you giving this wrong number that you have to do in the future? But only for your own good face, which is not, they have given these wrong numbers. For the next year, they are projecting 2.1 percent. I find it very difficult that they will be able to collect, to grow the economy at 2.1 percent. And in fact, the World Bank has predicted that the next year, 2020-21, the economy will grow at negative 0.2 percent. But unfortunately, we have to rely on the figures of the federal government. We do not and cannot do our own calculations. And that's why we have to just, uh, uh, you know, Adopt these numbers while knowing that these numbers are inherently incorrect. So the total provincial receipts, the, to the total provincial receipts of the financial year 2019-20 were fixed at rupees 288.7 billion. The COVID-19 situation deeply affected the provincial receipts. The actual collection is expected to be about 210 billion which is only 8% higher than last year's collection of 194.9 billion. Hey, Sir, now I'll go to the budget estimates for 2021, if I can have this right. Sir, next year, our budget has pitched at rupees 1 trillion, 241 billion, 700 rupees. I'll give you the breakdown of this. Next slide, please. So, from this, our current expenditure, current revenue expenditure is expected to 968 million, 991,000, uh, 991 Our current capital expenditure is based at 39 billion, 191 million, 23,100. And our uh, Development expenditure is pitched at rupees 232 billion, 943 million, 256,000 rupees. Sir, uh, if I can go to the next slide, please. Sir, I told you what this is. Our total receipts are going to be 1 billion and 98 million, uh, which includes 760 billion, which I believe, which is minus 9% of last year estimate, but I feel that this number. Uh, will not be achieved and that is why I'll tell you when we uh, formulated the budget, we've taken care of these failures, inherent failures of the federal government of not collecting the funds. Uh, the total uh, revenues for next year, as I told you, 760 billion, federal receipts, provincial tax receipts of 263 billion, <coughs> non-tax receipts of 49.871 billion, and sir, I would like to mention here, in the non-tax receipts, we have included rupees 25 billion which have been deposited in the Supreme Court for the land which was taken by the government of Sindh and this money has been deposited by the uh, company which had got the land and we are in the Supreme Court inshallah ta'ala as the Supreme Court had earlier said this money belongs to the people of Sindh and we have accounted that and rupees 25 billion is uh, included that. The current revenue receipt for next year estimated at rupees 25 billion. Next one. Sir, I want to tell you that 413 Arab rupees are our employee-related expense. Our employee-related expense is that this year, in the difficult way, today, the government has decided that we should keep the whole of Pakistan in the whole of Pakistan. We will give the signals if we will not increase inflated, adjusted, and adjusted. हम प्राइवेट सेक्टर को भी ये मैसेज देंगे कि आप तनखाएं ना बढ़ाएं। इस वक्त हमने कानून पास किया है कि आप किसी को निकाल
टाल नहीं सकते और इस वजह से मैं ये ऐवान को बताना चाहता हूँ कि काबीना की मंजूरी के बाद ग्रेड एक से सोलह तक के मुलाजमीन की तनख्वाह दस फीसद बढ़ाई गई है और ग्रेड सत्रह से बाईस की पाँच फीसद बढ़ाई गई है और ये जरूरी है जैसे मैंने कहा कि हम क्या सिग्नल्स देते हैं प्राइवेट सेक्टर को अगर हम तनख्वाही नहीं बढ़ाते तो हम प्राइवेट सेक्टर से कैसे एक्सपेक्ट कर सकते हैं और मैं चाहता था कि वफाकी हुकूमत भी ये करे और अपने लोगों का ख्याल रखे नेक्स्ट साइड डेवलपमेंट के लिए हमने प्रोविंशियल बजट में 170 अरब रुपए रखे और आगे जाके मैं इसकी मजीद डिटेल आपको बताऊंगा सर कीपिंग इन व्यू अब नॉन डेवलपमेंट इन डेवलपमेंट प्रॉपर्टीज और मेजर माइल स्टोन ऑब्जेक्टिव सर वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सरसाइज मैक्सिमम ऑस्टेरिटी मेजर्स इन अ नॉन डेवलपमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर सर वी विल प्रोवाइड मैक्सिमम to the health sector so will enlarge substantially a social protection net to increase cash transfer to poverty inflicted people aur sir iske kuch main aapko details bataunga sir we provide ways and means for employment generation as well as sustaining economic activity for the poor and the poor in rural as well as urban areas and we have a scheme for that sir uske liye bhi main aapko bataunga सर हम तालीम पे अपना फोकस कंटिन्यू करेंगे बाकी एरियाज में बिकॉज ऑफ द कोविड सिचुएशन वी हैव रिड्यूस बजट बट हेल्थ और एजुकेशन में हमने अपना बजट कम नहीं किया बल्कि बढ़ाया है सर दी आउटब्रेक ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन इज नियरली हर्टेड वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी पाकिस्तान इज अफेक्टेड टू द कोविड नाइन्टीन क्राइसिस इज थ्री सोर्सेज ऑफ सोशो इकोनॉमिक इम्पैक्ट on the population mobility and mortality containment measures such as general lockdown work down restriction and also peace easing as well as restriction of lockdown in response to disease spread local and targeted lockdown reduced global demand so these are the problems that the population is facing while the socio economic impact of the crisis will be felt across the board it is clear that particular segments of the population will be highly vulnerable to extreme distress and food insecurity families facing morbidity and mortality low income families under quarantine self isolation local lockdown daily wage earners casual self employed during future phases of general lockdown laid off workers due to slow down in global demand in order to assess the and manage potential post covid 19 crisis finance department has a short study conducted to analyze severity of economic challenges to prepare a strategic plan for providing fiscal stimuli economic resuscitation and social protection current situation has affected every sector which contributes to economic growth agriculture sector contributes a significant portion to our economy it is affected badly in post covid 19 scenario unemployment is on the rise the businesses are at standstill and small and medium enterprises need assistance for revival for ensuring food security and reduced inflation and employment a strategy to encourage a community driven economic activities focusing on supporting home based business small and medium enterprises a social protection and economic sustainability package of rupees 34.2 billion is proposed for the next financial year 2020 Sir, we are allocating rupees 20 billion for cash transfers for individuals affected by COVID. These are the rupees that are being given for cash transfers for those people who have been affected by COVID. Teacher, here. One slide, Abhi. Rupees 1 billion subsidy will be provided for purchase of quality rice seeds to the farmers with land holding of less than 25 acres. 
Rupees 11 billion is allocated on account of wheat subsidy for the year 2020-21. The amount has been enhanced from Rupees 5 billion allocated in the current financial year. Sir, 1 billion will be provided on account of fertilizer subsidy to the farmers with land holding of below 25 acres. Subsidy and pesticide control will be given. Those who are farmers will be given this subsidy. In the small business support fund, there are three other things. These are the share of the country. The social protection strategies unit through the social welfare department in the inner man. This is the size of the loan, which is about 1 lakh rupees. These small urban units have been given to small business support. The urban rupees are under the Pradhan Mantri Shahri Ilaqa. These are the urban rupees. The urban rupees are under the Pradhan Mantri Shahri Ilaqa. These are the urban rupees. 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 या पावर्टी रिडक्शन्स को कार्ड जो कोई सामान्य एसआरएसओ एनआरएस एनआरएसपी थर्डी वगैरह कंपिया सोशल वेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट के थ्रू या नहीं भी दी सर रुपीस 500 मिलियन इस कैप को सपोर्टिंग टेक्नोलॉजी बेस्ड स्टार्टअप इंक्यूबेटर्स एंड एक्सेलरेटर्स टू इन्वेस्टमेंट डिपार्टमेंट रुपीस 700 मिलियन इस कैप को सपोर्ट ऑफ आईटी इंटरवेंशन एंड इनोवेशंस सॉल्यूशंस एंड गुड्स एंड एक्सेलरेटर्स टू इन्वेस्टमेंट डिपार्टमेंट इन कंसल्टेशन विद आईटी डिपार्टमेंट रुपीस 500 मिलियन इस प्रपोज्ड फॉर लाइफ टॉक मीटिंग कंसर्ट डिपार्टमेंट विल बी लाइफ टॉक इन फिशरीज डिपार्टमेंट largest sector with an allocation for current revenue expenditure of rupees 120 billion and development including foreign aid at 15.5 billion rupees sir in next financial year the total current revenue expenditure budgeted is rupees 131 9.1 billion while allocation for development schemes in the health sector have been increased from 13.5 billion to 23.5 billion and i'll talk about some of the initiatives of the health department next time please sir humne corona emergency fund time kiya hai aur isme 3 arab rupees iski details mein aapko de chuka hu 81 isolation centers humne banaye shuru mein ye details bhi maine aapko di sir 1.12 billion हमने रिलीज किए हैं डिसिप्लिनेटेड हेल्थ फैसिलिटीज को फॉर कोविड 19 बहुत इन द पब्लिक इन द प्राइवेट सेक्टर और हमने 1.080 billion बीसीस को प्रोवाइड किया था फॉर राशन टू डेली वेज ऑर्डर्स कोरोना टेस्टिंग के बारे में आपको बता चुका हूं कि हम 80 से बढ़ा के इसको 11,450 पे ले गए नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सर इंफेक्शन डिजीज हॉस्पिटल बनाने जा रहे हैं और इंशाल्लाह ताला जुलाई के महीने में ये हॉस्पिटल ऑपरेशनल हो जाएगा ये पाकिस्तान का पहला इंफेक्शन डिजीज हॉस्पिटल होगा लेकिन जब हम सिर्फ कराची तक नहीं असम सिंध जे हर दुबई में हेडक्वार्टर में एक रो इंफेक्शन डिजीज हॉस्पिटल का काम कर तो जी ये आसाम इंफेक्शन डिजीज हॉस्पिटल स्टाइल से भी साइन वन बिलियन आसार रखे हुए हैं जो हम दायो हेल्थकेयर प्रोफेशनल्स के लाये 5.6 बिलियन हैव बीन एलोकेटेड टू सिंध इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ यूरोलॉजी एंड ट्रांसप्लांट 1.75 बिलियन टू शहीद मोतरमा बेनजीर भुट्टो ट्रॉमा सेंटर कराची पीपी Lady Health Workers Program के लिए 1.21 billion, 150 million हमने various dialysis facilities को grant करने के लिए रखे और 1.9 billion हमने hepatitis control program में for prevention and control of hepatitis रखे हैं। सब blood cancer की medicines के लिए हमने 431 अशारीय 13 million रखे हैं। 183.6 million हमें allocated for purchase of hepatitis B vaccines. The birth those. एक अरब रुपया हमने रखा है for welfare of HIV AIDS patients in Sindh. और last year मैंने अपनी budget speech में बताया था ये continue कर रहा है. Sir हम 39 ताल का headquarter hospitals की जो upgradation और revamping हो रही है. और जो construction emergency trauma centers 41 कर रहे हैं. उसके लिए हमने 1.295 billion रखे. 
ताकि ये कंप्लीट हो जाए तालका हेड क्वार्टर और डिस्ट्रिक्ट हेड क्वार्टर मटियारी कम्बर उम्र कोट इनशाला ताला तैयार हो जाएंगे 25 बड़े ट्रामा सेंटर गवर्नमेंट लियारी हॉस्पिटल कराची में आ जाएगा ढाई सौ मिलियन हमने थर फाउंडेशन को दे रहे हैं ताकि इस्लाम कोर्ट में हमारी एक कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है उसकी तरफ कि इस्लाम कोर्ट में थर फाउंडेशन जो कि मेजॉरिटी ऑन सिंध गवर्नमेंट की है वो अस्पताल बना सके अगली अगली स्लाइड में सर आई विल नाउ गो टू एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इज अ प्रायोरिटी दिस इज दी ओनली अदर सेक्टर वेर वी नॉट रिड्यूज दी एलोकेशन सर एलोकेशन हैज बिन इंक्रीज टू टू हंड्रेड फोर्टी फोर पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन दो सौ बारह बिलियन इस साल थी वो बढ़ा के दो सौ चवालीस आचार्य पाँच अरब कर दिए डिस्पाइट रिसोर्स कंस्ट्रेंट हमने एजुकेशन में अपने पूरी बजट का पच्चीस आचार्य दो फीसद रखा है इससे पता चलता है कि हम एजुकेशन को कितनी प्रायोरिटी देते हैं और एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर को एडिकटली इक्विप किया गया है कि वो एजुकेशन फैसिलिटीज को बेहतर सक कर सके सर दो हज़ार बीस इक्कीस की ए डी पी में एजुकेशन सेक्टर हैज बिन एलोकेटेड ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट वन बिलियन फॉर थर्टी नाइन थ्री एंड नाइन्टी सेवन एंड ऑन गई इलेवन न्यू बटन अप्रूव की एंड एलोकेशन ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द फॉरन एडेड प्रोजेक्ट इन एडिशन टू द प्रोविजन गवर्नमेंट बजट रिसोर्स एलोकेशन नेक्स्ट लाइक भी सेक्टर की तरफ मैंने एग्रीकल्चर में शुरू में बात कर ली थी मैं ए, कुछ एग्रीकल्चर के बारे में भी आपको बता दूं ए, सर एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर है गेट मैं तो बता दिया मेरा ख्याल है इसको रिपीट नहीं करता इसलिए कि जब मैंने शुरू में बात की थी तो लोकस जो हमें अफेक्ट कर रहा है उसके बारे में डिटेल बता दी थी सर जस्ट टेल यू द इम्पोर्टेंट टारगेट बंद कर टेल यू द इम्पोर्टेंट टारगेट Achieved in the agriculture sector in the current financial year 2019-20, including developed registered varieties of onion, lady finger, rice and mango crops, production of 9,000 plant lids through tissue culture technology in the laboratory, and provided to growers on subsidised rate, produced quality seed of crop. For further multiplication, analysis of 23,949 and 7,091 samples of soil. and water for the fertility and suitability status and establishment of 22 agro mag technology services centers sir agle mali saal ke liye hamare kya targets agriculture mein i'll just tell you the next financial 2021 targets have also been set to be achieved some to be highlighted include acclimatization and adaptation of tropical fruits launch bio fortification technology project to combat zinc deficiency in wheat rice crop establishment of zinc institute of biotechnology and genetic engineering establishment of soil microbiopsy and micronutrient research laboratory at orchard nutrient management research institute nirpur khas and to launch campaign grow more cotton to launch skill development and management program for orchards and vegetables farm workers to establish cold chain management reduce system to reduce post profit losses of per acre horticulture project so it is also planned to establish new fruit and vegetable markets in different districts of sindh through public private partnership sir uh, i uh, may locus sir i will uh, just briefly tell you about the works and services and the road sector the government of sindh aims to develop safe swift and reliable transportation infrastructure in sindh to boost the sector an allocation of rupees 6.54 billion is allocated against seventeen major scheme the government is committed for the revival of karachi circular railway crossing uh, costing 207 billion rupees for the redressing the transport issues of karachi the government of sindh has allocated 3 billion rupees for construction of underpasses and over bridges over railway crossings al along this kcr route Sir, in the road sector, in terms of fiscal resources, rupees 36.5 billion is proposed as an allocation in ADP 2021 for over 5,000, over 500 schemes. The portfolio includes road-related schemes of Works and Services Department and Local Government Department. Besides provincial development budget resources, an allocation of 165 million is provided under foreign project assistance. <laughs> Current financial year, 98 schemes will be completed by June 
2020 and around 150 ongoing schemes during next financial year are targeted. Sir, irrigation sector will be allocated a development budget of rupees 20.1 billion in ADP 2020-21 for 198 ongoing schemes and 18 new unapproved schemes. The portfolio includes irrigation-related schemes of irrigation department, lining of main canals, matching allocation schemes, and the Tharp Fall infrastructure projects. Besides the provincial development budget resources, an allocation of rupees 6.95 billion is provided under foreign projects assistance. Currently, 106 schemes are in progress and target to be completed by June 2020. Among them, 15 schemes pertain to lining of channels, smooth supply of irrigation water to tailenders, and improve the irrigation and drainage system in the province. <coughs> 33 schemes of lining of canals will line 632 miles of canals funded by Asian Development Bank. So in the irrigation sector, main focus was on canal improvement and drainage works aimed at improving operational efficiency of irrigation water and delivering equitable, assured share of water at the day. Others include Shahid Menazi Bhutto, Sweet Water Project for Thar, Umar Court to Kitari, Bakhi First Link Project Scheme, Supply of Water to Thar Court, Installation of Solar Tubal Distance, Lining of 1,396 miles of distributary from provincial resources, construction of 64 small dams, recharge dams and delay action dams under ADP and ESDP, and 15 small gabion structures across various Nez and Nagar Parker and Koestan area. Stored waters from hill torrents of Karunjar and Kirtha Hills will irrigate 179,244 acres in drought affected areas of the Parker and provide water for people and livestock. On the completion of small storage dams in the drought affected areas, Nanka Parker water will be available for people, livestock and agriculture for 14,900 acres. Sir, I'll talk a little about local government. We believe in democracy and democratic norms. We believe in strong political and democratic institutions. Our government brought local government system of the dictator under Sin Local Government Ordinance 2001 to an end and enacted the Sin Local Government Act 2013 passed by the Provincial Assembly of Sin. Our government works closely with local governments to solve the problems of people of the province at their doorsteps. The government of Sin, in order to strengthen the working and to cater to need of all local councils from time to time and enhance the share of local councils. The grant of local bodies of Sin allocated for the year 2019-20 is rupees 74.5 billion and rupees 67.5 billion has been released to all local councils by 30th May 2020. So the government of Sindh has enhanced block allocation for grants to local bodies in Sindh from 74.5 billion in the current financial year to rupees 78 billion in the next financial year. So the government of Sindh is sharing the financial burden of TMC. The funds are released on monthly basis on account of regular OZT share, regular pension amount, and regular grant and aid amounting to rupees 160 million, rupees 430 million, and rupees 215.4 million respectively. The total amount is rupees 805.5 million. The total amount is at 10 billion. The figure included rupees 293.2 million, one time special grant. The regular grant and aid amounting to rupees 24 million is being released to KDA on a monthly basis to meet out salary, pension, and other non development expenditure. Fund releases released to KDA during current year 2019-20 are rupees 2.4 billion. Rupees 470 billion on account of regular grant and aid and one time special grant and aid, respectively. Government of Sindh is also paying monthly electricity bills, electricity charges of KWSB since 2016. Approximately rupees 6 billion are the expenditures on this account in 2019-20. Sir, in the local government department, 34.7 billion were allocated for 315 schemes and 93 new schemes in the current year. Uh, the schemes include Karachi Water, uh, Karachi Water Sewerage Project, the later Karachi uh, Water Supply Project. Uh, total expenditure incurred in these schemes for 15 May 2020 was rupees 
11.4 billion. Main emphasis was given to complete ongoing schemes which had reached an advanced stage. Uh, the matter is, so the matter of KFO is being pursued with the federal government, and just today the cabinet has approved the recommendations of the technical and the steering committee on KFO so that uh, this project can go on. Sir, the government of Sindh is taking lead in strengthening of the social welfare department and its allied departments to medicate suffering of poor prevailing circumstances due to COVID-19. Therefore, budget allocation to social welfare has been enhanced from Rs 1.8 billion to Rs 27.1 billion. In the next financial year, with an overall increase of 1,360%, as mentioned, Earlier, rupees 20 billion has been allocated for cash transfers through Sin People Support Program for people affected by COVID. Sir, in the Women Development Department, according to the Population Census of Pakistan, total population of Sin is 47.886 million, out of which 22.956 million consists of women, which is 47% of the total population. Women are playing momentous and pivotal role in every walk of life. I just hope that we had Shaheed Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto leading us in these tough times so that she could take decisions like other women leaders in the world, like the Prime Minister of New Zealand took, and she uh, took the country out of the COVID situation. Unfortunately, uh, the males, including myself, have not been able to even fit in the shoes of our great beloved leader, Shaheed Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto. So the government of Sindh is specially focusing on welfare and development of women. We have launched various initiatives of providing women equal social, economic, political and legal rights. The government of Sindh is taking lead in strengthening women development department in prevailing circumstances created due to COVID-19. Thus, increase of around rupees 5 million in operating expenses, increase of 2 million in law charges, of Directorate of Women Development, Shahid Benazir, and inscription of honorarium of rupees 3 million for the members of Sindh Commission on Status of Women is proposed for the next year. Sir, minorities, minorities are an integral part of the population of Pakistan, including the province of Sindh. They have the freedom to live life in accordance with their respective religions and customs. The government of Sindh has been taking steps time to time for welfare, and prosperity of the minorities said that, said they, so that they may play their role in the development and progress of the province of Sindh. Rupees 855.6 million was allocated for financial year 2019-20. For the next financial year, Rupees 1.5 billion is kept in the budget. Sir, before I end, I'll just talk about our public-private partnership initiative. Sir, as this house, the people of this province know, we have a very good public private partnership program which is ranked at number six in Asia. The province of Sindh is the province of Sindh uh, is number six and is considered as a sovereign unit as far as public private partnership is concerned. So that is why, because of the shortage of funds, we are focusing on the public private partnership initiative. And I'll just quickly list a few projects that we are doing. We are doing the Malib Expressway project under public-private partnership, the Ghotki Kanthkot Bridge under public-private partnership, education management organizations, education management organizations uh, are being, uh, you know, uh, we are working with the ed education management organization for public-private partnership. We've got 106, 61 outsourced health facilities under public-private partnership. Sir, what we propose to do is do the wastewater treatment plant, TP1, uh, under public-private partnership, the urban road project, Karachi, the Dhabiji Special Economic Zone, uh, Marble City project in Karachi, Technology Park at NED University, non-formal education under public-private partnership, so both in terms of infrastructure, both in terms of brick and mortar and services, we are leading the entire country to in public private partnership. Sir, one thing that I forgot and I should mention, when I talked about salaries, the pension
pensions will also increase in the same proportion with advancing so the pension for the retired employees will also increase in the 10 percent from May 2016 and 5 percent from 7 to 22 as I mentioned for the uh, currently working employees. Mr. Speaker, sir, we fought against the COVID-19 pandemic with vigor and spirit. Our response was appropriate and timely. Our province was the first that took timely measures to keep the people of province of Sindh safe. The people strengthened our hands and supported our efforts. I've heard people blaming, I've heard politicians, senior politicians, government people blaming the people for the failure. Sir, it is the failure of the governments, not of the people. The people of this province, the people of Pakistan are very, very knowledgeable. They know what is wrong for them. But if you give them mixed signals, if you say that it is just the flu, if you say that you don't want to test your test, if you say that your telephone messages say that it is not a disease, then how will people think about it? This is the whole thing. लेवल पे थी और अब लोगों को ब्लेम कर रहे मैं अपने मुल्क के लोगों को ब्लेम नहीं करता हमारे मुल्क के लोगों ने हमारे साथ कोऑपरेट किया हमारे सूबे के लोगों ने हमारे साथ कोऑपरेट किया हमसे कोऑपरेट अगर नहीं किया अगर रखने आटकाए और लोगों की जिंदगियों से खेले तो वो आपको पता है कौन थे वो वो लोग थे जो कहते थे ये फ्लू है जो कहते थे लॉकडाउन एक फैशन है पूरी दुनिया कर रही है और आखिर तक ये कहते रहे क्या हुआ भाई न्यूजीलैंड ने कोविड को डिफीट किया 92 ने हमने न्यूजीलैंड को वर्ल्ड कप में हरा दिया था हम इसी पे आज तक खुश हैं ये जो फरंगी खेल पे ये लोग खेलते रहे उसकी भी बात कर लें सर वी हैव ट्राइड टू एलोकेट आर रिसोर्सेस फॉर द नेक्स्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर 2020 21 प्र the pandemic may have had an impact on objectives and targets, but will surely not dampen our spirits. We need help, guidance of this August House, political parties, private sector, and the people at large for uh, this fight against COVID, for this struggle against COVID. Sir, we also invite the government of Pakistan to come and work together with the federating units because a strong federation is in the interest of democracy, political institutions, socio-economic development, economic prosperity and welfare of the people of the country. Our Shaheed leader and Muslim world's first female Prime Minister, Mahatma Benazir Bhutto said, and I quote, Pakistan's future viability, stability, and security lie in the empowering of its people and building political institutions. My goal is to prove that the fundamental battle for the heart and minds of a generation can be accomplished only under democracy. We are the followers of our great leader, Shaykh Mottarma Benazir Bhutto. We will fight to the last for democracy, for provincial autonomy, for safeguard of the province, the people of our province. And inshallah ta'ala, the Pakistan People's Party government will not fail the people of Sindh. So we will have to develop a consensus and make a joint strategy to address the problem in national interest. The constitution of a country provides various constitutional forums and procedures for solution of problems in, in a constitutional way. I urge through this house the Honorable Prime Minister to immediately hold the meeting of the Council of Common Interest so that these issues can be discussed there. We have a constitutional forum. We should not rely on non-constitutional, unconstitutional measures to combat issues where constitutional forums are available. It is, the constitution says that the CCI has to meet every 90 days or abhi tak sirf teen meetings CCI ki hui hai jabke do saal mein art meetings ho jani chahiye thi. So, I have to say that the House of the Prime Minister of Pakistan, who is the Council of Common Interest, will request that they will be able to take the responsibility of the CCI and the CCI. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Sir, we are committed to the future of the CCI. We are committed to serving the people. We are committed to serving the country. Our loyalty to this land is beyond any doubt. Our leadership sacrificed their life for the cause of peace and for strengthening and consolidating democratic institutions. 
our party is the stumbling block against exploitation, discrimination, and undemocratic norms and traditions. Sir, today was a unique day. Today was the first time in any assembly in the province of, uh, in, in any province of Pakistan, the National Assembly or the Senate, where, Mr. Speaker, you, because of this COVID emergency, held a session online. Uh, there are a number of members who are present online. I should have welcomed them up front, uh, those who have joined us. I can even see uh, Salim Baloch, who is infected by COVID. He is sitting and attending the assembly session at home. This was possible because of you, Mr. Speaker, because you thought that people who are infected, people who are vulnerable, have a right to attend the assembly session, have a, uh, they have a right to uh, represent their constituents. <laughs> Sir, we affirm that with the guidance and help of Allah Ta'ala, and the support of people of Sindh, we will face every challenge successfully. I once again thank the Treasury and the opposition. Uh, I'm sure they'll go and listen to this speech later because they've missed a lot. The provincial government of Sindh is working tirelessly. We have successfully led this entire country. We have successfully led the PTI, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, the other political parties, they have followed us. And this was because of the guidance of Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari and President Asfali Zardari that we in the government of Sindh were able to take steps to protect the people of Sindh. Inshallah ta'ala, under the guidance of our leadership, we will continue working tirelessly with the people of Sindh. And Inshallah ta'ala, the people of Sindh who always repose confidence in the Pakistan People's Party because of our hard work, Inshallah ta'ala, the people of Pakistan will see what a sane, responsible leadership can do in order to save lives. Or hum capitalist ko, us ghar mein ke ji, dhyari dar kya karenge, daily wage workers kya karenge. Lekin asal masla humara industrialist ka tha, jin ki factoryaan band ho rahi thi, jin ke paise kam ho rahe thai, us ki wajah se unho ne logo ki jane khatre mein daali, aur is waq 3,000 se zyada loog, इस वक्त जब मैं बोल रहा हूँ तीन हजार से ज़्यादा लोग अपनी जान गवा चुके हैं मैं आपका शुक्रगुजार हूँ स्पीकर साहब इंशाल्लाह ताला ये जैसे भी कहे हम तहमल से इनकी स्पीचेस सुनेंगे और मुझे उम्मीद है कि एटलिस्ट वाइंडिंग अप स्पीचेस सुन सके ताकि ये जो बातें रेस करेंगे उनके प्रॉपर जवाब हम दे सके इनमें इनके पास ना रोटी है ना कपड़ा है मकान है ये जो सारे लोग बैठे हैं ये सारे जो बैठे हैं ना ये पता नहीं ये दिहाड़ी दार हैं सारे के सारे मैं ज़्यादा नहीं बोलता इसलिए कि मैं ये देख रहा हूँ इस इस सुबह में अल्लाह ताला का शुक्र है कि एक बंदा भूख से नहीं मरा पिछले पूरे पाकिस्तान में नहीं मरा है ये मैं आपको बता दूँ यस हम लोग गरीब मुल्क हैं ये हमारे पास गुरबत का इशू है ये गुरबत का इशू कोविड में उठाने की जरूरत थी पहले आपको गरीबों का ख्याल क्यों नहीं आया पहले नहीं आ रहा था अब ये बहाना बना के और अपने एंड्स मीट कर रहे हैं मैं एक बार फिर स्पीकर साहब और सबका शुक्रगुजार हूँ पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद Okay, now the House is adjourned to meet again on Saturday, the 20th June 2020 at 12 p.m.